What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is June 17th, 2021. I'm here with Brian. Line. Bruno. What up? And Kelly. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> and this is uh, and this has got our attention podcast season two, episode one. Man, you guys murdered that. You murdered I it. it up that time. I, I was so bad. I'm sorry. Are we dropping sorry, F bombs now? Is that a thing? Are we doing this? Dang. That's, that well, was at least two. Ryan's to start going off. <laughs> off the chain. Oh, wow. Okay. So apparently that happened. Um, yeah. So Which part? we are excited that we have made it. At least I'm excited that we made it a whole year around the sun. I Woo-hoo! can't believe that I actually stuck with them for over a year. Uh, it is a tough. I made a joke earlier when we were <laughs> muted that this is a flat earth. So the sun actually went around us. And it was much better the first time, but since you all missed it, now you get the explanation version, which sucks in comparison. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it makes sense that you said it because Zycia just used the exact same lines from the first time that he did this intro. That's exactly why I mentioned going it. Out. But we decided to alter it a little bit to make this. I don't because more know what you're talking about. Awkward I I literally went can't. back in time, and this never happened. So I don't want you talking about. Uh huh. We, we literally can't do this without like screwing stuff up. Which which is which is good because you know we've made it around. Well, okay, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Go ahead, Zycia. You can explain what's different for those that aren't having video. We have made it around the sun. This is season two. We've said we're moving to season two, episode one, uh, and we also said we were going to have a guest today. So we reached out into our collective bucket of uh, of people that we could potentially interview. <laughs> of and, awesome. Uh, the one of the people that we actually got a hold of was Day Drinker ATL, which is one of uh, the people who've reached out to us many times in the past. So uh, we do really appreciate her being here, and we'll get into a little bit of uh, getting to know her and and why she's here. Uh, but we'll start with uh, a new little thing that we're going to call today uh, Kelly's Corner. <laughs> uh Kelly's Corner. Let me pull up my notes, guys. Sorry. Um, did you have notes? So, I did. I actually took notes. <laughs> so there are a couple of things that the show's called got our attention and um i thought uh, i'd like to bring up a couple of things that got my attention the one thing um that everybody's been talking about lately is the 17 year cycle cicada um which creepy little things uh, yeah i i well so here in atlanta we have lots of uh um periodical cycles or uh, periodical cicadas not cycles Sorry, on the team. <laughs> yeah um so every single year we have an annual cicada and they come out and they make a lot of noise but the it's new kind of cicadas the, the 17 like. yeah i like it i actually enjoy the cicadas but these 17 year cicadas are apparently really really loud um to the point where in north georgia people kept calling the police because they thought that um uh, an alarm was going off and the, so the, <laughs> the police were like please stop calling us um a couple of the things that people were doing with the cicadas um eating them uh one guy ate uh 30 cicadas and then started going to into anaphylactic shock he was started getting hives and stuff um because apparently cicadas are related to shrimp and lobsters so i did want to see who of you guys would actually eat a cicada that would be a negative ghost right God, no. No? It really depends on like... <laughs> of course. It must be a Canadian yeah. dish or something. It's, <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Like, I think... I think yeah. if it was like a one-time thing and someone was like, here, just try this piece yeah. of a cicada. And it was like, I don't know, like smoked or something in a way. I don't, I don't know how it is. Yeah. Smoked, like, I might, so, cicada. <laughs> I might give it a shot. <laughs> but also, what I'm getting out of this I mean, is that if there was ever a time to steal a car or rob somebody's house, <laughs> it's now. This is now cicada season. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. yeah, and like I don't like oh, any kind of seafood as it is. Although I did yeah. used to eat shrimp a bit while I was younger, and what had actually what had mm. actually started down the road of not liking any of this was that I saw what live shrimp looked like, and I mean, yeah, cicadas, shrimp. I could see them mm. being similar in many ways. So, yeah, that sounds pretty disgusting. Although I could see somebody just doing a doing a big old craw boil of them oh yeah I, yeah so, just doing a bunch of them up until they turn whatever color they're going to turn with some potatoes and some like you know celery and carrots and <laughs> onions and well, yeah make a big old stew i mean there's got to be something to them this guy ate 30 of them mm-hmm. and he was allergic he, like he sauteed them in garlic butter too 
which actually Amazing. sounds delicious. Well, then he's fine. Which would be hilarious. Me. Yeah. Which would be hilarious because he was probably allergic to the garlic. <laughs> no, they <laughs> definitely. Like they they definitely they, they they quoted like, in the article that yeah it was definitely uh, they are related to shrimp. But I've it, eaten crickets before, and I think they're delicious so how do you wow. eat them so fast that you get to 30 without noticing that you're <laughs> allergic to them yeah like that's right it's it's like that aren't exactly the smallest insect well she right? said they're this was a, large, a gentleman from georgia so maybe no this is no 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 this is a guy from ohio oh Ohio. yeah because okay. it's, yeah. it's, it's got to be where yeah. the 17 year old yeah. brood x is what's there were what's, some some in georgia the in north georgia there were some um most of them were in the northeast though What's interesting about those things, though, is like they literally are born and they start, start dying. Really, everything is out to kill them, essentially. Like there is a I listened to a whole like actual podcast about just these things and why this is important. Uh, but there's um, there's a fungus that they can get. And it what it does is like eats them from the inside out. And what happens is when it starts eating from them out, like <laughs> Weird. Uh, it uh, <laughs> it causes them to give off the, the different pheromones as if it were a, a female. So the males start trying to go after that one to, to you know, reproduce. And it turns out that it's not. And they catch the fungus and then they end up dying. So it's just like whole process of them trying to like mate. But yet they it's there's like everything's STD. out. Yeah, everything's gonna, out there. So. I'm going to rescind yes. my comment about being willing to try this <laughs> STD ridden insect. Um, I don't. I don't care if the fungus doesn't affect me. Smart. It doesn't have to. Yeah. Uh, I'm not touching anything that is that's, dying from the inside out of a yeah. fungus. That's that's really smart, son. That's a smart decision you made there. I mean, that's the advice I'm going to give my child when he hits college. So. Yeah. Kid, don't go eating any cicadas. <laughs> or just anything that's rotting from the inside out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> su- surprise, you have a shellfish allergy. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? He does. Who knew these uh, shellfish were hanging out in the top of a tree? Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently, so they, they, um, you know, come out, <clears throat> grow their wings, they mate, um, and then uh, lay their eggs in the trees. And the eggs, once they start maturing, fall down to the ground and they dig down in the ground and they literally just like suck on tree roots for yeah. 17 years. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's no, pretty interesting. Uh, so there is a pizzeria in Ohio who started putting them on a pizza. It was uh, like a Thai chili cicada pizza. It looked delicious, I thought. They, There's it, not <laughs> enough Thai chili in the world to get me to eat that. And I the like quote, chili. The quote, hey, day drinker says, it's it COVID times. <laughs> These are hard like, times. You got to use what you got. All right. There's lots uh, of protein. Listen, There's that's, millions of these things out there, like, I guess. That's like hardcore yeah. zombie apocalypse time that you're yeah. talking about where we're going to be like chowing down. on. You, some damn you've cicada. never hey. thought of eating a cicada shabab. Come on. <laughs> God, no. That sounds I, terrible. Like, I've never even had that thought yeah. until you said it. Well, now Thank it's you in f- your head. Yeah. You, you polluted <laughs> my mind. Oh my well, conveniently enough, they're, they're outside. So you could go grab one and try it yourself. If I you'd like. think I don't have any here. I'm, I'm going to not yet. Not yet. Yeah, They're coming. If yet. you're out there okay. and you can ship well, us some I, cicadas legit, for yeah. Phoenix Nova, we'd yeah. appreciate it. Ten, I think 10 years I haven't yeah. heard any here. Really? I hear frog. No, we got tons of frogs. That's probably why are you, you don't have any frogs? cicadas. Are you sure you're not hearing what you think is frogs are actually cicadas? Well, no, because uh, the, the, one, the frogs are so loud that I actually thought it was a bird okay. stuck in my gutter. Uh, and I like okay. banged on the gutter and the frog jumped out. <laughs> It like, was like this little guy. And I was like, you made that much noise? Oh, my God. It's like you're Zeissia or something. Well, he's inside the gutter. So he's like projecting his voice. Yeah. Like, that's pretty smart. He that's a good singing, way to find a mate. Man. Yeah. He was, he was out. just singing. He was using yeah. his abilities. I like the frog. He's like the showers. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Yeah. Um, it, it, they've also caused car accidents. Um, the last 17 year cycle, apparently a cicada had uh flown into this guy's car and he wrecked hit a pole he was he was fine hit a pole but it like knocked out all of the power for like several houses and stuff like that same thing (laughs) i would be that guy yeah (laughs) Yeah, i wouldn't be that would be me my windows down typically but (laughs) yeah 
Yeah, not during cicada season. Every sure. 17 years, every insurance <laughs> company is just sitting there denying claims. Sorry, uh, your coverage doesn't include cicada-related accidents. So <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to buy yourself your own new car. Yeah. Poor guy's like, I guess I just have to eat cicadas to save money so I can buy a new car. <laughs> isn't that isn't that like a, highly a, nutritious. a scary movie? Isn't that like it? Like it's every 17 or like 30-something years. Like this thing Something happens. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody can make a movie. Yeah. Here we go. I'm, I'm putting it, it on a, I'm putting it on a, a bunch of cicadas yeah. connected <laughs> to each other, covering yeah. themselves in face paint to make themselves look like a humanoid clown. Yeah, there you go. See. <clears throat> oh, well, I mean, like. I just made actual... that movie way more terrifying, by the way, because it, it just <laughs> broke apart into like 10,000 cicadas and chased you down a sewer. That's not a good look. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was there was that other movie, too, where they like had genetically engineered something and it mimicked a human, but it was like like a giant human sized like cockroach thing that ate people. Uh, that that one sounds was, like a that sounds, sounds like a like, movie for sure. Sounds like Men in Black. It was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. No, so. it was better than Men in Black. Better than Men in Black. That's that's pretty rough. Well, anyway. Men in Black Two. It was better than Men in Black Two. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I like that's fair. I'll take that. What else you got in your corner? A, a ton better than. Uh, well, actually, before before Day Drinker uh, gets on to Kelly's corner number two, I'd like to point out she's already got a fan. Runner, Runner Diva said, "Yay, Kelly!" Oh, thanks, Runner Diva. I love you too. <laughs> I don't think she said love you. I think she just said yay, Kelly. It's it was kind of, implied. Uh, that's kind of up, like Zycia. it's kind of like taking <laughs> the first date dude, pretty far. Dude, seriously, I'm gonna, why, I'm do you, why do you ruin cicadas? The, why do you ruin the moment <laughs> like that? Oh my god, it's amazing. Like you should be so happy you're married because it's amazing you mm. got that far. I'm gonna give him an Impossible Burger and he's gonna eat the whole thing and be like, by the way, that was made out of cicadas. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they're made of anyway? Yes, much. that's that why correct. they're so delicious. Yeah. They're good. So the other thing I had in my corner, um, did you guys hear about the lobster diver that got swallowed by a humpback whale? I did. I didn't did. actually read it yeah. because I was like, there's no way that's real. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of so, skimmed over it. <laughs> so actually, there were some doctors who were saying there's no way that was real because they were saying that there's no way that uh, this diver could have um, handled the barometric pressure coming back, you know, getting sunk down and swimming back up so quickly. But um, a lot of people came to this guy's defense. Um, so he is a, a part of an elite group of fishermen. Um, and I'm, I'm talking, you know, referencing mostly from uh, a Boston.com article about this. Um, so he's a, from an elite group of fishermen. He they don't typically <laughs> exaggerate. They actually downplay like the size of their catch and stuff like that. One could say that you're kind of Canadian. I, I'm nice. sorry. When you said an elite <laughs> group of fishermen and you said this article is from Boston.com, all I could think of was yeah. like, well, obviously, yeah. because who else would have a, an elite <laughs> group of fishermen? <laughs> Yeah, Alaskans, well, they, they, for sure yeah, Alaskans. Alaskans. Yes, yes, yes. They they oh, downplay man. their yeah. catch instead of normal mm. people that say this is six inches. Yeah. They're like this is six inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they 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 downplay like the rough seas and stuff like that. They're like hardcore but very humble and and hold back. So this guy says um, he felt. A huge shove, and then the next thing he knew, everything went completely black, um, and he could sense that he was moving, and then all of a sudden, like, started feeling, like, the whale squeezing in on him. Um, and then he, he could feel the whale, like, shaking its head, and then basically he just got spit out, like, he saw light, and then, you know, floated back up to the um, the surface, but... Uh, they also think it's it was a mistake, like it was a young humpback whale possibly um, that swallowed him up, but they don't eat people. <laughs> we typically not that, know that. Not that we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least not not yet. They, they do said now. They didn't say, their esophagus is too small to actually, uh, you know, swallow a human. Yeah, I was um, going to say that's got to be a tight fit. I mean, yeah. humpback whales are not the largest. Yeah. They are well, they are one of the largest, but they are not. But they're the not largest. the largest. Yes. So like we're talking like man to humpback whale ratio. Yeah. That's yes. <laughs> I gotta stop. <laughs> I'm mine. We're gonna slip it in. That's what the she's male oh, to worse. humpback ratio. <laughs> oh my. No, but then but then he goes further and says, "Quit while he's behind." As day drinker goes, "We're gonna slip in." Hey, that's what she said. <clears throat> 
Oh my god! Yeah, you Sorry. guys are incorrigible. Just is, wait. I love just, it. Just wait until we get to game of the moment. Um, so <laughs> the guy's still in the hospital. He's got some hip issues. He had a swollen hip, and the doctors are saying um, that he may be like out of commission for a while, which taking down the whole ship, and they don't think that's going to happen now. Um, he's in a lot, of, a much better place. Um, but other other fishermen, other people who knew him, are really coming into his defense, saying. We really think this happened. Um, there, there's no reason for us to, you know, to to to, to think he's lying. So, um, is this how Viagra was made? Because this this whole this, thing this sounds story. like like <laughs> a college the story. The icing on the cake is that this guy's main injury is his hips hurt after his interaction <laughs> sliding into up, a man. humpback whale. Right. <laughs> I this is this is totally commercial. Are you just a humpback whale? Do we wish you were a blue whale? So you should try Blue Chew. Uh, blue Chew. We I feel will like take sponsorships. I'm not even I feel sure like we're like a, we're like just so close to being like a manscaped advert about manscaping properly for like yeah. extra aerodynamics. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, like yeah. Zycia can handle the manscaped commercial. Uh, yeah. Demir and I lo- I know you'd love the blue chew one do you feel like you've been swallowed by a humpback whale <laughs> <laughs> do you have is issues the- <laughs> sliding into your humpback whale is the pressure just <laughs> getting issues too no much <laughs> join us for our subscription of manscaped so next time you never have an issue sliding in again 800 <laughs> manscaping <Does> whale <laughs> are you so old your hips have started to hurt <laughs> oh, I can't even. I- <laughs> Are you a part of an elite group of fishermen? <laughs> <laughs> when you go to the bar, do you downplay your catch? <laughs> oh man, I mean, this y'all is- could learn a lesson from this guy. Okay, I'm Apparently. sticking up for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I- Long story uh. short, I believe him. I I think he got swallowed by a whale <laughs> and got lucky and. Yeah. Well, yeah, he got lucky. He yeah. got swallowed by a whale. <laughs> you know the people. I doubt he'll hear this, but uh, I am glad he's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. As as the first ever man most yeah. likely to be swallowed yeah. by a humpback whale, um, you have a claim to fame. Yes. And it's not well, just your fishing anymore. So likely, hold on to likely, that. likely the second to have it done and tell the tale. Yes. Oh, that's true, Jonah. The tale of the whale. <laughs> I guess. It's well, literally in our show notes. Yeah. That wasn't. Was uh, that a humpback whale? Yeah, it was unpack well. Oh, so <clears throat> wow! I didn't realize Jonah this <sighs> was a humpback whale. Well, so <laughs> whale. Typically, uh, we well, like to get typically. to know our guests. So I, you know, she's been talking for a little no. bit. I kind of want to find out a little bit more about Day Drinker ATL or you know Kelly. Uh, so <laughs> Kelly uh, apparently you have a lot of knowledge in uh, uh, insects and 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 ocean animals. <laughs> And things. Uh, what what do you small thing? What do you like to do? I guess in your spare time, yeah. like what is it that you you do? So uh, I do like to garden and I like to cook, and I'm also a parent. So I've got cool. uh, two little girls who take up a lot of my time. Um, I also like to play video games, but I'm really really bad at them, and I only play. We have something <laughs> in video common. Games, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the video games I like to play are typically um, like narrative puzzle games. So Limbo is one of my very favorites. Uh, Super cool. Yeah. What Remains of Edith Finch is my new favorite. Also um, very I'm cool. Planning on playing it again. It's really great. Um, but I also like games that like I, I like to play to like kind of calm me down. Um, Unravel is a um, a great game. It's, it's also a puzzle game, puzzle narrative, but it's got it's just really beautiful and it's got a really great soundtrack um much like this other game east shade that i think uh zicy is going to talk about later um so those are those are the things that you know and i just recently uh resigned from my position at my company so i'll have more time to actually play some games and hey. cook and, and garden and that make sounds it. that sounds like you're living the dream I am living the dream, taking the whole summer off. <laughs> so there was an email that you'd sent us a few yeah. uh, weeks <laughs> yeah. back. 
And it was like a little tiny, like tiny build. Like you had a little cafe that you were building and uh, you actually yeah. gave us some references of some other com- other people online doing things. Mm. Uh, what kind of got you into that? That was something that was very was, interesting to see, but I've yeah. not seen a lot of it. So very random. Um, I've always liked tiny things, um, trial size stuff. My sister has always too. And my dad actually, um, builds dollhouses uh he when like when he was a lot younger he built my um my cousin a dollhouse she's um he's she's a little older than me uh so that so i then i bought my dad I, i started watching youtube for the girls and watching like these tiny cooking videos and it's like teeny teeny tiny stuff teeny whisks and tiny piping bags and then youtube sort of decided you know well this is the next thing you should watch uh and it was these tiny house things and i was like oh my god uh it, it like that was a great way to relax having a really stressful career and kids so i just kind of started watching it and it was and these are kits that you can buy so i bought one of the kits and i bought one for my dad and he's still putting his together um i've had really late conference calls with work uh and sometimes i would you know to like keep myself awake and and keep going put them together um if there was like a lull in the conversation or um i would actually watch your podcast and um put them together at the same time so i was nice. laughing with you guys and commenting <laughs> but also putting together my tiny at that point it was a, a coffee shop so um i was trying to get a picture before the podcast started but uh next week i'll have one for you i'm actually in the process of uh, uh modifying it so that it's a crime scene um to kind of making it my own and my next thing is gonna, probably going to be like a book nook but there are um some people online on on twitch actually who um are mini makers um so I, i'd like to give them some shout outs on the next one if that's an option <laughs> yeah well, sure yeah. and so these Absolutely. are people that you should follow you, and, 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 and and talk about and see yeah you you said uh, yeah. you said make it into a crime scene mm. the first thing i popped in my m- mind was literally season one of csi <laughs> yes where the where they're the, you know because they always had you know the individual stories for each episode and then they had the overarching mm. state story that went through the entire season and the overarching story for their first season was mm. these little dioramas. Yeah. And, uh, and like, I'm pretty sure that was season one. It's, it's been I a while, right. it's been a yeah. long time. But when you said crime scene, that was the first thing I thought <laughs> yeah. of was those. <laughs> Makes sense. Like the, the little blood and like the so head over here. Yeah. Are you having any problems at home? <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and, and one other thing that uh, viewers should know is I am, like the queen of Halloween. So anything that's really creepy, I have Halloween decorations up year round, not my entire house, <laughs> but my husband put a stop to that, but uh, <laughs> Halloween decorations that are up that he approves of. We've got a headless horseman in our, our sunroom and um, little, little things that just get to stick around that he's like, okay, yeah, that actually is really cool. Actually and I make my own Halloween decorations. And, I see in your background, I see like yeah. uh, hear no evil, speak no evil, whatever, but it's like, yeah, this- skeletons yeah my skeletons those those actually used to be in my um office at my former employers um yeah so those were up year round and they're gonna those are gonna stay up year round um behind me actually is the wallpaper from or is a tapestry of the wallpaper from um the haunted mansion and i've got my little oh, cool some little haunted mansion guys here so oh nice yeah your little cheerleaders yeah yeah well that's I, I, like Admittedly, Halloween was always been one of my favorite, mm-hmm. still is my favorite time of the year. Um, and having worked at a place that celebrated Halloween, uh, Zeiss, you got that link, didn't you? Uh, yeah, no, I ignored that. It, it went somehow to trash. I don't know. It was weird. Like it just disappeared. Um, like we, we really, uh, I, I loved dressing out for work for Halloween, especially since it was like a week plus long celebration at that particular place. Uh, and I'm, I'm still down for like having the SAS gaming trip to one of the haunted hotels. Like that needs to happen. And yeah. like just getting up at midnight and walking around the dark with like an AM radio and like whispering into it and yeah, yeah all kinds of fun stuff. You guys have fun with that. That'd be great. You let me know how that goes. Could, 
Could you could you imagine like doing that? No. You're gonna doing, you're like, gonna come with us, Zeus. Yeah, no, you, no, it's happening. Not, no, it's not happening. It's, it's the no, whole it's doing. Like, listen, listen. Yeah, I'll pay for your therapy afterwards. You're coming with us. <laughs> yeah, do, doing a podcast in the middle of and that. By and by pay for your therapy, I mean I will let you talk to me about your feelings afterwards for free. Nice. Well, <laughs> as I'm he glad. nods off, do I get to have drinks as well? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can, sure. Uh, why not? We can hundred percent. Night drinker and day drinker. Let's do it. <laughs> oh yeah, right. We could, we could start the podcast at midnight. That would oh be Oh my slick. god, that would be awesome. <laughs> Rough in the dark. Awesome. Yeah, no. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, See I uh, I know I can speak for them, but I can say we all appreciate you joining us on today's thanks, podcast. Uh, I know. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, me. you may feel like you know right. why why need to get interviewed like whatever, <laughs> but you know it is people like you that submit things to us and that we you know didn't know anything about mini makers and know anything about some interesting stories that you brought up today, but it was, uh, those are the things that matter. It's, you know, the people who listen and people like you that are hanging out with us. So we appreciate that. Uh, and unfortunately hey, we're going to keep you others, others as, have questions too. Well, we're still going to keep her as a prisoner and have to go through the rest of our show today. So that's good too. Well, yes. <laughs> so, um, you already talked about like the genre you like to play and, and, uh, which is good and enlightening, but on the other side of things, What's your early memories of gaming? How'd you start? Uh, so we had an NES, you know, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. I actually recently um, just introduced my daughters to the NES Classic, and they nice. started playing Mario. Yeah, um, but uh, I was saying, telling Brian earlier, one of the games that I played as a kid was um, Paperboy on NES. Loved Paperboy. Yeah, but for some reason. Um, having the buttons on the other side, I would play was better. For, I, I, it was easier for me. So I played with the controller upside down. <laughs> so left would be right and right would be left. But for some reason, throwing that paper <laughs> jumping, uh, that I, 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 I can't explain it. And I could probably play it tomorrow <laughs> that way better than with the controller the right, the right way. Well, it's cool that you adapted. At yeah, that's <laughs> so weird. I know. That's cool. That's though. wild. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> not weird. Everybody likes different things. <laughs> yeah. Zycia always, yeah. Zycia is always apologizing about how he has to remap stuff and like, like he's like he's the only left-handed yeah. person in the world. Or something. Jimi uh, Hendrix played his good played a right-handed guitar upside down because he yeah. was left-handed. So yeah. you know, yeah. If I just like, turn the controller upside down. It's it's still a little something to make a deal out of. Like you got to understand, inverted controls weren't mm -hmm. introduced until like somewhat more recently for yeah. people because some people do play better like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like you were one of potentially the original I mean, inverted oh control players. I mean, well, that's, that's how am wild, I not making though, money like, off of this? And now? and my thing is, <laughs> at the age that you were playing it at, you yeah. were a younger person than you are yeah. now. I was um, like, so yeah, having yeah. to like think about that as you were playing like that's yeah. also you know. i do want to point out somebody made a comment um in chat about the dog from duck hunt laughing let's not go <laughs> i have memories of when i was a child and having that dog essentially what i felt was like be condescending and belittle yes me and I mean, so believe me yeah. little dimirn would like <laughs> yell at the television at that stupid dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> as it cackled at him. Yeah. Oh, it's a hundred percent condescending. That's not a feeling. That's that yeah. was part of the design of the game. So yeah, that you was couldn't rough. shoot him. Oh, you could. Like, but it did just nothing. Wouldn't, did nothing. Uh, yeah. It would just be what, a blank. What? Wait, I'm like an adult now. I should go and get like an emulator of that game and mod it so that you can actually shoot him. Oh my. I don't no, want to die. I just want to be like, ow. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. This is for what you did to me 25 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> okay, Demir, and I got to find this game for you. There's this freaky game. <clears throat> and I, I, Is it the VR one where it's Duck Hunt, but it's a horror game? Because I've played that already. What? Okay, but Duck Hunt's in it. It's not like the, my. it's definitely it's, part of it. Yeah, it's a VR go game in and you can you, shoot the dog. You are oh a kid God. and you play Duck Hunt. And as you're playing other video Duck games Hunt, too, and other video games too, but the primary one is Duck Hunt, and it's yes. a horror game. The dog actually comes out of the game to hunt you. 
That is awesome. Oh, that might be different than the one I'm thinking of. Because the the one I'm thinking of, you like go into the game and you can now look around inside Duck Hunt and you can go over to this like pickup truck. You can pick up shotgun shells. You load them. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about like um, the virtual reality Mario. Because I saw that one like Mario, like the level, you could actually like go behind the level and actually see like Mario jumping. But, well, like, but there was the platform. there was no Mario, though. Oh, okay. This cool. this this is more of a horror game, and yeah. maybe we are talking about the same. We're game. We're talking about maybe the same just, game. Yeah, they. It might just the dog. The like, dog. You like, literally haunts had to. You. you yep. had to like pick up the like cartridges and plug them in, or you yep. put stuff into the VCR because you could play stuff in the VCR. I'll find it. No, oh, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. It, it is a horror game, and the dog is uh, still even now has been given more power to torture you. <laughs> What's funny is that reminds me Even of, better. you know, Barney the dinosaur as kids, yeah. like the purple dinosaur. And like, I hated Barney because it just creeped me out. Like he was just a creepy thing. We all know who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. And uh, <laughs> it was Lysia. And my friend, this is back in uh, Wolfenstein 3D was out and on a big, like large floppy disk. Right. And uh, he brought it over and he's like, like, or I'm sorry, it was actually a small, little, small, hard desk, whatever, 3.5. But uh, he brings it over and goes, hey, like, let's play. And I'm like, OK. And he pops it in and it's modded and it all of the enemies are Barney. So and, <laughs> and you automatically get the minigun at the rip start of the game. Like you just come out and you just have the minigun and every character is just Barney. You're just mowing them down. And I was just like, <laughs> yes, like this is what I want. <laughs> so that just kind of reminds me of that. Well, now I kind of want to. A horror game where all of the monsters are like childhood characters. So there you like go. Get hunted down by like Barney or like <laughs> the bananas in pajamas. Actually, they the just... Teddy Graham bears also scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. I used to have nightmares. I used to have nightmares. I was like <laughs> crawling out of a vent and shooting you with like a death rainbow. Well, I uh, I, mean, I had nightmares. Is, this is of... I mean, he got he got put yeah, into yo indentured uh restaurant servitude very early so i could see how the teddy graham the teddy uh, graham bears, bears would haunt me in a kmart i would have this reoccurring dream where i'd be in a kmart and <laughs> this is telling my age uh when <laughs> there was like these teddy graham bears and they were just kind of like doing like this little leg like, hop like hobble going back and forth coming out me i would be running because they just <laughs> they didn't catch me what's um what's a kmart uh it's kind right. of like a, a crappy tire it's like a there. it's like a really stripped down Canadian tire, really uh, stripped down. Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> just like, just like another superstore kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. they they only yeah. had clothes uh, un, and unsuper. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 there was nothing unsuper. super. There was, yeah. it was never supered at all. Yeah. yeah, it was like the the little brother or sister of like a Walmart, but they didn't have any. Is that food. they called a Kmart because it's but just okay. Same prices yeah. as Canadian Tire. Gotcha. Same yeah. prices as Canadian Tire. Gotcha, gotcha. Except for if you had a blue light special. Yeah. Blue oh, light special. True. They literally have this yeah, blue light. Yeah, they'd have light. these carts. <laughs> yeah. And this blue light would be flashing and you would have Karens and everybody else rushing from across the yeah. like Kmart with their carts and cr crashing into each other to get to the blue light special <laughs> so they could save like 50 cents on like a bunch of razor blades. Yeah. And, and you could you could put stuff on layaway too. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Beautiful. that's still a yeah. thing. But yeah, yeah, it was it was an interesting time. They were an interesting type of story. Yeah. Oh man. Well, do you have any other questions for her before we move on? <laughs> Come here. Aaron. No, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't well, have any other questions. We've covered so much. We've covered your your hobbies, <laughs> what kind of games you're into, when you yeah. got started in gaming. So now we know yeah. that Kelly's going to recommend all the horror games for yes. Zyce to play. Yes. Um, right. Yes. The next series. I see why uh, well, you guys wanted her on well, now. <laughs> well, okay. So she's going to curate them and she'll probably make some recommendations, but we'll also get recommendations from the audience. And if you're a Patreon, we're going to have a special level for you and Patreon where you can like yes. suggest a game that mm. he has to play. Yeah. Oh God. I, uh, oh God. I'd like to point out that some games out there that are horror games also have modding communities to make them scarier. And we are totally open to making sure that he's set up with the scariest mods possible for said game. If you find them, we'll arrange it. Wow. OK, <laughs> well, this took a dark turn. I'm glad that I agreed to all but of this. Uh, this is not a dark turn. This is all for charity. It's a well, good thing. Depending on the mod, it could very well be a dark turn. Yeah. Well, so At there the is one what? thing. One thing I do want to say, um, I want to give a huge shout out to my brother who helped me 
you know, decide which gaming computer to buy because without that, I couldn't be playing on a gaming PC with you guys. And that has been a blast. So thank you to my brother. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. brother, for getting yeah. her on a PC thanks, again. Because now she needs <laughs> yeah. to game. He's, he's passed down so many Xboxes. So he's been in a very instrumental part of my gaming experience. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, um, let's actually get into the the news this week. Uh, E3 has come and it has gone. And there's a lot to tell about it. There's a lot of things that were covered. Uh, a lot of things I haven't even caught up yet because I have been, been kind of behind. It's been a it's been a week. We'll just kind of it's been a behind. Week. It's been a week, so it's uh, it's been interesting. And uh, but yeah, you guys go ahead and uh, talk about what you saw. Oh, wow. Where to start a lot. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's 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 start with uh, the character creator. <laughs> which was the most generic. Uh, Try not to cuss too much here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already started the show with two f bombs, so I'm, I'm tr- two, 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 two. I thought it was only one. Oh no, oh, no. you didn't back to back. <laughs> the back exact same back. phrase. Yeah, you're gonna be surprised. It is the later. most generic ass nine purchased <laughs> bowl tookie, uh, with where everybody consistently just looks surprised. Um, for their portal. This is part of the E3 portal that they we are released. all serial killers when it comes to E3. Right. Every last one of us. <laughs> and it, there was, there was some customization, but it was clear that it was just like some like generic pre-purchase thing. And that went from there to like, I was in the portal and I'm like, okay, I'm in the E3 portal portal. What do I do? And they're like upcoming events. Now I would went to upcoming events and I'm expecting to see things like upcoming Microsoft events. presentation and, you know, presentation from like Capcom and from Nintendo and like none of them showed up. There, there was some, there was like four events and this is the, like the day before and you could add events to your calendar and all this stuff. And I'm looking at it going, I, Shouldn't I be able to see what's going on? And granted, they also had like Razor and I bet you they had T-Mobile and we named off a couple, uh, you know, a week or two ago that were just insane who they had presenting because that's E3. You have a whole bunch of big companies and then you could turn around the corner and you're like, who are you? What what are you doing here? Type thing. Razor makes sense. But some of the others... I was expecting like, where's the Red Bull event? Cause you know, they're there, you know, gamer fuels there. And then it gets even worse because then you go to the, like, who's there, the people. And it's got not necessarily presenters, but just the other people like you that are there. And it had this, it just has this page where you scroll down. And you know what I'm talking about where you scroll down to the bottom. It's like loading more. And you scroll down again, loading more. Mm-hmm. You scroll down again. There were so many people there with no indication of who's who, who's what, who's in the industry. Nothing like zero. Oh. Like this is supposed to be an industry event where industry people get together and secure sales of their game with, you know, you know, Walmart for like, X amount of shelf space and, and publishers talking developers. It's, it's an industry event, which they're trying to change into consumer event a little bit. And it was just page after page of just these names. I scrolled and I kid you not for 10 minutes. I was still in the A's. Good oh, Lord. And I was like, this website is broken like it can it was new names but like if you know you're gonna have three four five thousand people sign up for this you need to have a better system you need to at least have like oh here's a click on the a and go to the a's and here's b click on the b like i could not even get i signed off as phoenix nova 
<laughs> I came nowhere close to the peas to see like, you know, where my name was or anything. I gave up and I was like, whatever. And that was the last I touched the portal. I don't know if it got better. I le- legitimately do not know if it got better because it was such a horrible, horrible experience to begin with. So much so that I was like, I don't even care about the E3 part of it. At that point, all I cared about was the presentations by the big publishers, which they're pretty much going to do anyway, whether E3 exists or not, which gets me questioning, what do you need an E3 for? You don't need it for the industry parts anymore, because guess what? If somebody wants to sell something to, to Walmart, they're like, let's do a insert your favorite name of meeting, you know, virtual meeting software here. And let's get together and let me show you this stuff. Uh, Parsec is heavily used. Parsec is a way that you can actually have somebody remotely play your game in a very controlled manner. They use it for demos all the time right now and have been through the entire Rona. So it's like, what are you going to do? So that sounds like a lot of crazy for the E3 as a whole. Yes. Doesn't say they learned anything. Okay. Who here watched Microsoft Bethesda? Combo. Me. Very much. What what did you feel about it? Uh, I think that it's promising as I expected it to be, to be totally honest. The man who says every game starts at a level of shit and works its way up just said it was promising. It was very that promising. is a ringing endorsement if I've ever heard one. <laughs> just like um, there's here's, just so much yeah. like so much to, to be happening, really. Like yeah. they they really. They showed they showed that they're actually trying like they intend to go the distance from the looks of it. They didn't yeah. spend their seven billion dollars for no reason. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. The acquisition oh, of they, ZeniMax was for a purpose. And they brought the games they didn't talk like they've made mistakes in the past. God knows they've made mistakes in the past. They didn't sit there and say, and here's what we're going to do to connect your Xbox one to the TV that you can watch TV on. And we're like, no, I bought this thing to play games. Where, where the hell are the games? They brought game after game, after game, after game, after game trailer. And that's just their presentation. A little bit more about the rest later, but I was really, really, really impressed where they brought the games. And on top of all of that, they kind of end it with, we are releasing a game every month from here to the end of the year. Some of them new IP, all of them, all the ones that they're releasing, of course, not the third parties are day and date available on Xbox game pass because they're first party and that's how they do it. So, I mean, that was just absolutely incredible. The only thing that was depressed about the whole thing, because I'm not one of these people. I've, I've got both consoles. I got a PC. I play games on everything. I'm, 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 I'm platform agnostic, right? Unlike Mike. Unlike Mike, who is very PC master race. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I do own a switch like it's my wife's, but I do have it in the house. I mean, it it does exist. You have. Yeah. I also have a Sega Genesis. I also have an NES. I also have a uh, what else do I have down there? A bunch of stuff. Nintendo 64. So, I mean, I do have other consoles. It's just not anything. You've you know, touched. This just that matters. You just make it very clear. Like very, very clear. To be clear, you the last time you've touched those consoles is so long ago that if you married were married to them, they would be divorcing you right now. Not true. I actually played them not too long ago and I actually have a Wii and a Wii U as well. Fair enough. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what? You just named the same thing twice. So, yeah, I. Uh, Okay, so the one thing I'm kind of depressed here is Sony wasn't here. And it's not because 
I was like, oh, well, Microsoft did so well that they would have won E3. I don't care. I don't care who had a better presentation. They're out there and they're doing their best. So no matter what, we win. The people who want to play the games, we yeah. win. The thing that I care about the fact that Sony wasn't there is because then you're going to get fanboys on both sides just as bad. The Xbox yeah. ones are going to be going, well, Microsoft won. Sony couldn't even bother to show up and they don't have any new games, blah, 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 or whatever the arguments they're going to come up with because they're going to be a lot more creative than me in coming up with those arguments. And then the Sony ones are going to be like, well, Sony didn't even show up, so it wasn't even a contest. Of course you're a winner. You're the only one there, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it's just going to feed... Well, Okay, I don't know who I'm kidding. Even if Sony was there, it'd feed into the console wars just as bad. <laughs> but it, you know, it just seems like it's, it's kind of. I w I wish they were there for a lot of reasons. Uh, I would have liked to have seen what they were showing up. I mean, even if they weren't part of E3, they can do yeah. a conference anytime they want to on the internet. And yeah. I'm curious to see what they're going to continue with because they got a lot of good things coming out themselves and they, we've said it before. They're kind of the king of first party titles. I think they're kind of hurt. They're a little butt hurt on the whole like PlayStation five release. Cause they were like, check out all these games. And it's like, now it's like death loop is not necessarily a exclusive. Okay. No. Uh, Skyrim <laughs> or elder scroll six actually isn't coming um okay <laughs> what about this other game oh yeah that's not actually gonna happen either what? so what? like they're probably butthurt i mean that's a you know well i i don't know if it's that because again they they are they have good first party titles i mean there's, those are all third party titles of vocal people <laughs> that are definitely not feeling it but you gotta yeah. think right if we're looking at it from a place of right now um, as far as I know, the X, the new Xbox Series X has like zero real new exclusives. Yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely. And, I That's mean, the true. PS5 has three, which is mm -hmm. better than zero. Mm -hmm. And all yes. three yeah. of them have been like really big hits. Yeah. Demon Souls remake, massive hit. Returnal, absolutely huge hit. Nobody really expected it to be as good as it was. And it's like now pretty much critically acclaimed. They're like, this has potential for being a game of the year. Ratchet and Clank, absolutely yeah. phenomenal as a game. Right. The only thing that they're upset about, the main thing I'm hearing out of this is um, there's some worries now about exclusivity going forward for Bethesda games that weren't contracted with Sony prior to the acquisition. And a lot of people from that minority are being very vocal about how it's unfair. And as a PS5 owner... Shut up. <laughs> it's I mean, it was bound to happen. You thought that Microsoft was just going to take like a back seat and just let Sony have all the exclusives for all of eternity. Yeah. That was never going to happen. They have like infinite money like they they're like a printing factory for money. They just yeah. boot up cloud resources and they make more money and then they just funnel into their gaming industry because they can. So yeah. prepare yourselves. It's, it's a good thing. I was super excited to hear that. There is going to be some exclusivity there because it means that um, that there's going to be more competition. Finally, yeah. like yeah. realistically, yeah. Sony, sure. Sony probably would have released, would have pushed for more first party games, even more than they have now. If there was real competition against them and exactly. there wasn't. But now there's going to be. Absolutely. So I think 2022 and 2023 are going to be really, really big years for both companies pushing out amazing exclusives that are as refined yes. as possible. I, like, I say that as in 2022 and 2023 are like the earlier years for this to start, because obviously some of these games like Starfield, Elder Scrolls six, you're not going to see these in most likely 2022 plus, or yeah. 2023. You're going to yeah. probably have to wait until like 2024 to see the first one of these come out. Plus yeah, you got the slow, you got the slowdowns from Rona <laughs> there. And really quickly, I, I hate, I hate to do this. Like I love to agree with Demira. And but I hate to agree here with James the Sucks, who <laughs> clearly said hot take exclusives are good for gaming. That's true. Uh, pushes innovation and competition. And we forgot and the, this, the other like exclusive game that uh, GTA five in yeah. 2022 and 2023. Oh God, yes, the exclusive. Game. 
But I mean, it, it does. It does push it because you know you got Sony that releases an exclusive game and or first party game, and there is no comparable game over on the other side until yeah. they go and develop the comparable game. And yeah. again, we win at that point. And that's the other thing, right? Like some games have been kind of blindsiding us. Like we we didn't see like for personally for me, I didn't see Returnal coming. I hadn't heard anything about right. Returnal until like a month beforehand, and they were just like. Here's Returnal. Amazing. Okay. So, so there's a good chance that Microsoft does the same thing. You don't know what they have cooking in the background. Yeah, I guarantee that. Guarantee that. Yeah, that's true. Bringing it back to the Microsoft conference really quick and covering some of the stuff there. Uh, I do want to say one, and this is not a first party title. This is actually a title that will probably show up on all of the consoles. But speaking of something that I didn't see coming, Atomic Heart. That game was wild. Yeah. <laughs> See, that. now, both of those responses were exactly what I was expecting. Yeah, Kelly, did I, I you definitely see Atomic Heart? I definitely watched the trailer for that one. It was a, interesting. <laughs> that was so much bizarre. Yeah. I mean, it starts off. And you're looking at this robot with a head that looks like a toy chest and it opens up and there's stuff in there and it's walking around this bipedal robot with a toy chest head. And from there, it just gets weirder. And I saw and I parts like where, oh th yeah. And this was weird because there was parts where there was a Chrome lady robot mm -hmm. that was Kung Fu in it up. There was points where, time was stopped there was telekinesis where things were just being lifted up in the there air. was a lot happening and a lot to there was up so much and there were guns it was a first person shooter yeah. there were guns there and everybody magic. was speaking russian <laughs> yeah yeah there was magic telekinesis and everything and one i encourage everybody go out and just watch the trailer for the batshit insanity and then after that, go actually read the, the description, which has to do with you are part of an intelligence agency and you're going in there because some robots went rogue mm -hmm. is what I'll leave it without spoiling the description of it, which is. It doesn't steal any of the magic from it. It just is like it, it grounds you a little bit of like, oh, OK, but it's still insane. So the game that grabbed my attention from that, and of course you guys would be like, no, wow, really, Mike? Another survival game? Um, <laughs> oh. is, there, you, is there more wood in this game? <laughs> is there more wood in this game? There's absolutely more wood in this game. But it's Stalker 2. So Stalker has been yes. a series, or not a series, a game that has been out for a long time, like the original Stalker. And uh, it just, it was before its time at the time. Obviously, if you try to get back and play it now, it's just... It just it's outdated at this point, um, but it's always it's very been like a post apocalyptic game in uh, in the actual um, uh, what do you call it area the I can't even think right now but the area in um, where the bomb went off or not the bomb the nuclear reactor whatever I can't Chernobyl think. Chernobyl there we go I was gonna Chernobyl, say Chernobyl yeah. oh, which is Daisy like, and what that's the hell what I was throwing off talking about uh, Chernobyl the... I was trying to Chernobyl. I was trying to say oh, yeah. I was like, Chernobyl but that yeah, would have been yeah. Daisy and that have been another Chernobyl. game. Um, but yeah, it takes place around that area. So you're kind of going through, there's all this like, you know, radiation everywhere. Um, there's people living within there. Uh, and it's just this really like creepy survival vibe along with creepy creatures and things because of like the way the radiation is like interacted with everything. Anyway, Stalker 2 obviously is, uh, is a new game they announced. Um, it is coming exclusive to Microsoft, Xbox, and also uh, Game Pass. Um, I think eventually it's in PC, so at least they'll have it available. Um, but it's it looks beautiful. I mean, I, I'm sure the footage we saw is, you know, the, the footage they wanted us to see. Um, but man, yeah. it did just looks it captivates that uh, it captures that feeling of like really just being mm. like living off the land and like stuff is really weird. And like he's running around. He has like a almost like a radiation detector. And that's how he's able to like find these creatures that are like starting to pop up. And then there's like, you know, a campfire because that was part of the game too. In the original, they have a campfire and you have like a guitar and like the people are just hanging out and like kind of, 
just like Russian drinking and whatever. Uh, and then obviously going out into the wilderness to survive. So I was really pumped about that one. I'm glad to see that Stalker 2 is actually going to be coming out. Um, it's been in the works for a long time. They've been talking about making Stalker 2 for a very long time. Uh, and now I guess we're at that point where that's going to happen. So I'm super excited about seeing that one. It, that one did look cool. I'm, I'm not a like a first person shooter type of person, but that one did look neat. Square came out with a little bit of something. Um, I wasn't really expecting too much from them. All in all, we didn't get too much from them. We got some things. Got I, some I got, things. We got more than I thought we were going to get. Like they had that one game um, that's like in the Final Fantasy universe. It's like a Final Fantasy Souls game. And obviously I'm intrigued like, they by that. Final Fantasy did the F-bomb up. They were like well, Final I mean, Fantasy 1 through 6 PC and mobile <laughs> remakes. Final Fantasy something coming out 660. They were so quick and fast between like Final Fantasy 7, the first soldier on Android. Their big thing for this year is already announced, which is Endwalkers, right? Because their best grossing game, the one that brings them in the most money at the end of the day is Final Fantasy 14. Um, yeah. And Endwalker right. is upon us in, you know, uh, Q3 or early Q4 this year. So like that was their big thing. And then obviously they had um, some published games this year. You know, they, well, they had the Avengers game, which has been doing not so great off and on. Um, so they Apparently did announce good there's enough, like a though, bunch. That yeah, they they got three more expansions three more coming expansions. for it. There's definitely an initiative at Square Enix to like mend some bridges that they potentially burned through releasing yeah. incomplete um, products. And I think they're really putting a lot of focus on the Avengers game. They really want to make it um, something that um, isn't just worth buying when it's cheap, but is worth buying at full price. Um, though I do agree that the game as it is uh, right now is worth it at, at a discount price. I like the fact that the expansions that they were doing were going to be story expansions, which is good. Giving you actual more content, not just more characters. And on top of that, the last expansion that they were going to do, which is the Wakanda Black Panther expansion, oh. looked amazing. That's beautiful. So uh, it just really looked good. So yeah. it looks like it's going to take them a little bit of time, but they're kind of hitting their stride on the adventure one. Uh, I mean, we'll have time will tell if they actually pull it off, but it's looking good. I'm hoping so. I'm really hoping that that they do that. And another thing is like they didn't say I think they showed like a clip of it, but they didn't say anything about Outriders. Um, but I mean, the development team for Outriders is still pushing out weekly updates saying they're trying to fix stuff. So I'm hoping that Outriders kind of is the next Avengers game and Square Enix like looks at it and goes, we made a lot of money off of it on the initial sales. Maybe we should show it some love and try and get your character back your equipment back i i, I got or, my character back i'll never get my equipment back i just have to wah, to concede wah. on that thanks people can fly you're welcome you suck so, suck so, so much so right now a couple of the so, uh, oh, sorry a couple of the things that i noticed or i liked um i've never played outer worlds i have seen their trailers their older trailers they're always hilarious but Outer Worlds 2 trailer was, I thought, hysterical. I so. haven't seen it yet. I need to go back and watch that <laughs> it was one. I played I, that was a World. lot of shade. It was totally satirical. Yeah, it was, it was, we have nothing, basically. Here's, no, here's it was a shade. monster. It was total shade. <laughs> it was 100% shade. They were, they were throwing shade. They were like, this is for all the developers out there that don't know how to complete a game. Looking at you, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077. Here's this thing in this trailer. You'll never see it again anyway, so yeah. don't get attached no, that, to it. And I'm that like, was, like, that was the amazing monster. part. Was, say goodbye to it forever. You're never going to see it again. <laughs> yeah, you're not, it's not even going to be in the game. Yeah. Oh, here's here's a wonderful silhouette of our protagonist, but they're yeah. only look they're looking away because we haven't finished the content yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's As great. As a matter I'm of fact, the oh, only thing amazing. we know is the title it was awesome like at one point he was like then you pull we're gonna pull back and then there'll be there should be lens flares and it was like every gaming video tra yes. gaming trailer you've ever seen yes. it was fantastic yes. i thought it was hysterical yeah i laughed 
So I uh, I need to go back and My finish wife. Outer Worlds because I never did, and it is free on Xbox Game Pass still from day one launch. So you can actually go check that out now, uh, Daydreamer. And yeah. you know, yeah. the first like, game, those a holes, she could not <laughs> believe it. The first it was game was terrible. really good. It it yeah. was. I mean, it had it's, it's issues for sure. Then. But here's the thing, right? Like the fact that the first one did as well as it did and they're making a second means that based on their community management, um, yes. like how their developers manage their Twitters and talk with the community in general, we can probably expect a lot of the things that people did not like and were super vocal about mm. to be gone and to be replaced Good. with things that people do like because they're very much a developer that is is pushing to like resolve those issues and they're like we want to make we want to make good story games again yeah Yeah. um go back to our roots and and i believe that they have the ability to do it it's going to remind me of like the original borderlands mix with like the next well not mix but like the original borderlands and then borderlands 2 like they took everything from borderlands and like just like really made it better and you know borderland 2 is amazing so um, another thing i'm really interested in and you guys are going to be like, no, no, don't don't say that. Fallout 76. Oh, my God. I wasn't back sure on what was. Well, here, I wasn't uh, sure what was going to happen when they moved under Microsoft. But it seems like Microsoft's willing to double down. With yeah. Bethesda on Fallout 76, and that's not a bad thing, because Fallout 76 has, you know, it has potential, a lot of potential yeah. that is not yeah. being fully utilized. For the trash can. And. <laughs> And I have a negative one. Like, like no, I think. <laughs> listen, between between, I tried. They looked. They actually looked like they had a decent story that they are releasing in yeah. Steel Rain, which, by the way, is releasing seven seven. I mean, it's literally around the corner, July seventh, and then releasing the Pit, which the Pit was was DLC for. So for Fallout, Fallout that was three Fallout. Yeah, three, Fallout three. Pit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they're going to be releasing that 2022. So they're going to be putting out a, a, you know, a lot of interesting stuff there. I mean, again, they're they're taking something that had a very rocky start. And while, yes, admittedly, it was the game I was most upset with when we spoke about it last week. Part of that was also because of no crossplay and us getting split up and it just wasn't a fun time for me when I was looking to like go and hang out with my dudes and and future hang out with dudettes, uh, you know, and go and have fun with this game. And I was completely separated from everyone else. So, so here's the thing that why this could work right now that ZeniMax is under Microsoft, we talked about Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds is Obsidian. If you are a Fallout fan, New Vegas is probably your favorite game because right. it was the best story. Obsidian made New Fallout or uh, New Vegas. So if now you have Obsidian who's making Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds two, but now they're under the same umbrella as the actual Fallout series because of Microsoft, <laughs> then potentially we may see some Obsidian, maybe some developers maybe kind of work on Fallout 76 to try to give it some polish to try to bring it back a little bit to make it, you know, more playable for people. I don't I don't yeah. think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to bring in new talent from other studios. I think the Obsidian team is is pretty locked on what they're working on. But that's a good thing. Like and I think it's, a lot of what Bethesda needed was new direction. New initiative really is what it is. Also, New Vegas was a while ago. You don't even know if those same yeah. developers yeah. that made the creative decisions or mm. worked and put their hearts. You don't even know if there's even there anymore. It's true. Uh, I cut the company stays the same, but a lot of the people behind it change. Um, Day drinker. What else? I mean, not even Microsoft, anything uh, it, or it could be Microsoft. I mean, even if they get what, to what share else? ideas, I guess is the bigger yeah. thing. Like even if they get to just sit in a conference room together now and yeah. go, Hey, back when I worked on that's new still, Vegas, there's just some things the that happen, you know, but that's yeah. It's still, if the people are there, yeah. So, but day drinker, what what was what's the other standouts yeah, for you? I don't have a place. I don't have a PlayStation. So obviously, I'm gonna like be geared more toward my PC and Xbox. Um, and I already mentioned that I really like um games that are kind of relaxing. And Flight Simulator looked really good. And they've got the the Top Gun like downloadable content afterward, which like I'll maybe not do. But yeah, it. I, 
you know, it's all free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah you have to I, download so Microsoft that, Simulator. It takes like 15 days. That's listen. Yeah. I, I got I'm unemployed. I've got plenty of time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that one actually looked really cool. And also party animals. I thought looked fun as party <laughs> animals looked amazing, especially me being a yeah. gang beast yeah. fiend. I love gang yeah. beast. And. So, no, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, so th- there was a game called um, Naughty Bear that was on Xbox 360. You can't even get it now. Um, the, in some said. of the animation, it, anybody you guys know uh, Naughty Bear I've at all? Never heard of it. So <laughs> it was this <laughs> game where you were this stuffed animal bear, and um, there's all these other stuffed animal bears and. Uh, the one bear doesn't get invited to this party. And so he basically takes retribution and like slices open all of his friends, like kills the party and like goes out for fluff because he like stabs a bear. And instead of like blood, it's literally stuffing. It was that sounds like you. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. Right. But some of their movements and like hitting people with shovels and stuff like that, it seemed a little naughty bearish to me. So <laughs> I thought it was cute. Yeah, I can see a little bit. I, I think we'll have to get you to play some gang beasts. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see what I'm saying there. Uh, Cause uh, even I was just watching a little bit of naughty bear there. And yeah. I could see a little bit, but oh, yeah. like human fall flat, um, mm-hmm. the, the moving out, the gang beasts. I mean, there it's, it's I'll been like this is. reoccurring theme of this, particular look and feel and, and movement uh, on these games that party animals just nailed Mm -hmm. and they just dialed it up to 11 and brought in the stupid in such a good way that I am. It looks hysterical. Oh, looking forward to that. (laughs) I I'm down uh, like that. Yeah. That's a play date. I'm there. As a, as odd as it is, one of the games that I'm actually like half thinking of taking time off work for that was announced. Uh, we'll have May off on uh, October 28th because they announced Age of Empires 4. Oh, is yes. Dropping. Oh, and, yes. Uh, I've been waiting a long time for that. So, yeah, I may be with you. <laughs> it's like a Thursday. So, like, yeah, I don't know to... if I want to work and then just like play and be super distracted. <laughs> Wait, but we can just both take well, off at the same time. Yeah. Well, that was the hilarious thing as I was watching this and, and I was watching people in chat and somebody was like, oh, look, it's all 2022 games. And I'm like, well, duh, what month yeah. do you think you're in? We're halfway mm. through the year. So, yes, yep. some of these are going to be 22. That, that's the whole point. They're talking about the games that are going to come out in the next one year mm-hmm. to a little bit more. Because uh, I, I mean, I Starfield actually- was... To your point, I had to remind myself of this. I was like, 2022? And it was like, shoot, it's, it's like it's almost July. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course it's 2022. And with that said, you know, I mean, Stalker 2 was a 2022. Starfield was a 2022. Yeah. But then they just nailed it. Back. It was just like all kinds of like back for blood was like October 2021. The Sea of Thieves bringing in... Mm. Pirates oh, of the Caribbean, that was which, cool too. <laughs> by the way, from my understanding, they yeah. are not using Johnny Depp's it, voice. It definitely isn't his voice. It, I could tell that from yeah. the the trailer. I knew it wasn't Johnny Depp's voice, but it is his character. Like he created it's absolutely that his character. character, and that's less than a week away. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's that's next Tuesday, yeah. the twenty second of June, that that drops. Like Yakuza, like a dragon was available mm. that day, which is the first time that's been on, on the, that's, that's been mostly yeah. a PlayStation thing. Uh, and, and uh PC, I think as well. Uh, you know, uh, sure. Battlefield uh, 2042 was a 2022 one, but like 12 minutes, which uh, I know. Yes. Oh my God. I can't wait to, that wait to play that one. I cannot wait. And it's August. Yeah. It's August. It's not it's that some, far away. It's okay. Is that the one that's in, in the apartment? Yeah. It's like yes. the apartment yes. and it yeah. keeps going back and forth. Yeah, mm-hmm. that looked really yeah. cool. I love the top down perspective. I think that's going to add a, like a whole other dimension. And also, oh, somebody playing in your. Yeah. Also, did you guys notice? Because I, I noticed it and I had to look it up and I was right. Uh, you probably didn't notice in the demo or in the, the trailer. 
the the cop comes in and they op- he, they open the door to like the hallway where the apartment is it's the shining um carpet it's the carpet from the overlook hotel uh, and so i looked it up after what? yeah i looked it up afterward and so the creators added a lot of that a lot of uh that, that was like part of some of their inspiration memento um there were a couple nice. of other movies that were like amazing. that but yeah it's amazing yeah. yeah well and 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 that's a good example of something that that's not a microsoft property mm-hmm. that's just microsoft was talking about during their thing but Microsoft killed it because they just yeah. talked about game after game, the game that's coming out. Um, you know, you know, every month they're going to be dropping something. Among Us is coming. October is um, going to be a big month with Age yeah. of Empires. Far Cry 6, I'm super excited for. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Far Cry 6 looks amazing. Everything I've the seen about that game looks great. Forza, and I really enjoyed the previous one. Um, Forza Horizon 5 is coming out in September. And then even Grounded, and Grounded is still, still in a beta state. Yeah. And the 30th of June, they're releasing a big update. It's still going to be in beta, but they're going to introduce the Shroom and Doom update. And they're like all these things. You can have pets yeah. now, little, little aphid pets. That one uh, looked really cute, too. That was cute. <clears throat> And they were and they were like, you know, you can do this, this, that, and that. And they said, and you can grow mushrooms. And they <laughs> not- literally in the trailers. Go ahead. They said, it. Not that kind. <laughs> not that kind. That's awesome. Diablo 2 resurrected. <laughs> That's date for yeah. release was also announced as September 23rd. Which yep. I mean, I think a lot of people are kind of like, whatever, like, who wants to play a game from 20 years ago, but I do. I can tell you who yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it all day long. <laughs> Far Cry 6, you know, like uh that's in uh October 7th. Uh and you know, this this is the most gameplay that I saw from Far Cry 6 and I was like I wasn't the only one. The people I was watching said the same thing, so these jokes are not mine, but they resonated with me. They were like that's like just cause. Like Damn. they had very much they had like the a, a uh, um kind of a grappling hook thing it was very much just causey and so they they said they said far cause um <laughs> you know just cause far cry i thought it was funny even funnier just cry yeah yeah that's what i would have gone with just cry six yeah that's that's something that <laughs> uh you know lots of us have been doing with the rona yeah oh my but i mean microsoft killed it uh nintendo had their direct and Nintendo does multiple directs through the year. So we've got to forgive them. No, we don't have to forgive them. This is E3. They did not bring a whole lot. Yeah. And my wife, who I swear Mm. experienced more of E3 than Zeissia did. Probably not wrong. (laughs) I had a week. Probably not wrong. (laughs) She literally took notes. We're sorry. We're sorry. Awesome. She took notes. Okay. She would have got me on that part anyway, then. (laughs) Oh, and and I love the fact that you I know she she was like Super Smash Brothers plus Tekken because they started off the yeah, yeah there we go you took notes too we awesome. all took notes I have a note that was just blank uh, most of my notes were in the show notes I just typed them in there uh, yeah see they started off with a Tekken character that I don't know that likes to throw people in the volcanoes because that's the thing in Tekken uh, this one character threw like threw his dad into a volcano or something like that mm. I don't know Tekken lore and I'm messing it all up I'm sure I apologize. Uh, but he's being added to Super Smash Brother, and that's how they started the show. Well, like and you said, they went. Well, like you said, Nintendo does a lot of directs throughout the year, so like E three isn't like the place for them. Like yeah. they do their own thing. But so. then they went to a numbered Metroid. They're doing Metroid Five. I did not see that. They're calling it Metroid Dread. It is not a Metroid Prime. It is a 2D Metroid platformer that looks fantastic. They even say it. It's the uh, the Metroid closing out the Metroid saga that was started way back in the day. Like, yeah, because like they went back, you know, in the 80s and said, we're going to make five of these. But anyway, uh, yeah, but still, I mean, that looked fantastic. Uh, my wife underlined it. 
And that's releasing October 8th. Yeah. It's around the corner. Uh, and then she said, no, she crossed it out and said the, the other release date. And I was like, no, no, you underlined it. It's yeah. the best thing there. You underlined it. <laughs> yeah. that, that, must be, that must be what it was. Well, Breath of the Wild uh, 2 apparently had footage they showed of uh, it looks kind of like going back to the floating islands, almost like the Skyward Sword uh, type of feel. Um, so they kind of showed that off a little bit as well. But it's. Uh, yeah, the Breath of the Wilds. Well, yeah, they no, they had the Skyward Sword Dynasty Warriors type thing. Which, or I may be conflating those two, but the the other big thing that I saw that was just almost stood up. They're doing another Wario, uh, yeah. another Wario games, WarioWare games. And not only is it WarioWare and a new one on your Switch, but you They're your actually... Wife's Switch. Or your wife's switch. If yeah, or my wife's switch. No problem. I mean, I'll play it. But, you, but you're going to be able to, instead of just playing as yourself or just playing as your Wii or any of like that stuff. Playing with your, Actually whoa. playing, not playing with your Wii, as your Wii. <laughs> my goodness, Icia. Keep this PG. I'm trying. <laughs> Says the guy I who can't, started I can't the even. show. Hey, now. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> nope. because I will. No one to know it will be bleeped out. <laughs> anyway, no, you're actually playing as the characters. You're playing as the different WarioWare characters, and each of those characters are actually going to have different abilities that you can use. So if Daydrinker picks, I don't know, the dog or something like that, and Demirin plays, picks Wario because, I mean, of course, the most Canadian of all the characters there. <laughs> You know, and Zycia picks one of the other characters, maybe the DJ cat or something. That sounds about his speed. They each are going to have different abilities that they can use in the micro games. So when the micro game comes up because of your abilities, you might actually play them differently from each other. Which is one of the selling points of this. So I mean, to me, that was one of the most exciting ones right there. That looks like it's going to be a blast. Oh, and yes, they had a new Mario Party. And by new Mario Party, it was a remake of four of the of the Mario Party 64 levels and 100 mini games throughout the thing of Mario Party. And it has like online play because of. Yeah. So does uh, everybody get participation trophies in this one, too? Because that's how the last ones. Have been. It's. Mario Party, which means that <laughs> you are going to be in the lead right till the end, and then BS is going to happen, and you're going to lose. I mean, but Mario Party original in '64, like that was that was a game because you would literally fight to the death on that one. But ever since then, I feel like it's just been participation trophy central. I mean, Mario Party was the definition of RNG BS. Mike sitting here like. In my day, we got <laughs> sent on the map both ways in the freezing cold. Yeah. Like Pepper's Farm remembers. <laughs> Calm down, all right? People can I get mean, participation was, trophies in Mario Party. It was a good E3 overall. It was. I really it was, enjoyed it. Was, I, think, I think because Microsoft was there, they, they made it a pretty decent E3. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think aside from that, it was, it, it, was, it, was, it was fairly lackluster. But, I mean, I've, I don't know. I can't remember the last time like I was super impressed with E3 in general. <laughs> like, yeah, I've never like, really followed like tracked E3 for the weekend. I would, you know, after the weekend's over or whatever, I would see videos like the highlight, like, oh, this one game was announced. This game was <clears throat> announced. Move on. Starfield having because a release it's date. An industry show. Mm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Starfield it's having a release date show. that was sooner than I expected was interesting. Well, it'll yes. get pushed out. It'll be the next uh, yeah. cyberpunk. It'll be like, Maybe I mean, how it? it's, it's such an amazing date. It's 11, 11, yeah. 22. Everybody said that too. Yeah. People said the same thing about Skyrim's final release date. And I feel like when they give it one of those catchy release dates, they like, they just do it. And now they have the money to do it. Yeah. Like if yeah. they need to hire more people, they'll hire more people. It's true. I think, well, and, and I say that it was a good E3, but, I take that back. It wasn't a good E3. It was just 
a good set of updates from the different game companies that we like. Yeah. I mean, even Razer was there and they like showed off their mask thing that we reported on. I don't know what six weeks ago. That's but still time. I, I think where Microsoft went above and beyond is they hit game trailer after game trailer after game trailer after game trailer. And they didn't talk about some of the things that they normally talk about, which is like, oh, here's where we're envisioning the technology going. Here's this cool feature that, you know, we're bringing to gamers. And some people missed that. And then the week continued. Oh, there's one other company I want to point out. Oh, go ahead. I just want to point out how ridiculously cringy the entire Verizon. Oh, God. E3, like. I could have lived without that. Announcement (laughs) was. It was so, so bad. I don't know what they were doing there. They were legitimately just like, we're Verizon, and we just want you guys to get super hyped for, (laughs) are you ready, kids? 5G! (laughs) Woo! And I was like, we've been hearing about it for long enough. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? Like 5G esports, 5G gamers. Well, yeah, they're going to 5G supports gamers. Woo. We're going to flip the switch. They're going to flip the switch and all of everybody who's got vaccines are going to like do whatever they want. Because we're a multi-billion dollar company. We just want you to know we're making a Big donation of ten thousand dollars <laughs> to this esports team, and you're just like, "What? Uh, what is this? What? <laughs> what are you? What are you guys right? doing here? And why is this two hours long? Yeah, <laughs> why? Uh, it was uh, it was good contrast for the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> what I thought was interesting, though, with the Microsoft part of it and hitting with game after game, and not talking about some of the things that they normally talked about what this is ostensibly being an industry show is that then throughout the week, they kept releasing stuff that you would normally see from them for the industry show. They released something that went a little bit more depth into Starfield. Not a whole lot. Starfield. I mean, like they're keeping the wraps on that and, and, but they did go into some of it and they actually showed some wireframes and they showed some like screenshots and, and not really gameplay, but a little bit of extra stuff. They went into like Psychonauts 2 and did a, co- a couple of things. And then they went into a couple other things like the fact that they have this whole Xbox cloud, which we don't talk about it too much for various reasons, but they have this service where you can, if you have, you know, especially like Xbox Game Pass or you purchase games on your Xbox, they have this service that you will be able to, well, and you already can play games on. You purchase the game on your Xbox and you go on a trip and you can pull out your phone and you can play the game on it. Yeah, yeah. that's live now. And, and that's yeah. live now. And it's basically the equivalent of an Xbox one. Well, the interesting thing about it is they're updating their infrastructure and their infrastructure now is going to be the equivalent of an Xbox series X. The cool thing about that is it's not easy to get a PlayStation five. It's not easy to get an Xbox series X, but you can, once they start doing this play Xbox series X games, on your Xbox One. Yeah, it's going to be pretty wild. Too bad I got an S. <laughs> Not too bad, she says. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love my S. I have and no you'll be able to do the same thing S. on an S. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The other... You'll be able to do the same thing on that. And the S plays those games great. I mean, uh, hey, we said it before. Fantastic. The difference between the S and the X is whether you have a 4K TV or yeah. a 1080p TV. And DVDs. So, so like, I just can't play movies yeah. on it. And the, the TV that I typically play on and play it on doesn't, isn't 4K either. And honestly, well, there you go. yeah, the, the games I play, I probably wouldn't notice the difference anyway. Because if I wanted 4K, I just do it on my PC. So. 
Exactly. The uh, other cool part about that is the push to the mobile sense to like a web browser because they were talking about obviously using your cell phones, but also having the ability to go into your web browser and also pull the game. And, you know, I could literally do that right now, even if I don't have the PC that can kind of back that up. Um, so, and then obviously with Microsoft and their, you know, whole Azure thing, like they could literally host whatever they want at this point. Yeah. Well, and you say about a web browser, uh, absolutely. Because that's the next thing that they're doing anyway, is that they're working with the TV manufacturers and they're going to get to the point very quickly where they just stream this to your TV yeah. and you can have the equivalent Minus a little lag, but the equivalent of Xbox Series X just to your TV. You just yeah. bring your controller and mm. you're playing the games and some of the games that's not going to matter. And the people that have already been playing on some of these cloud services are like. You know, the lags, not that bad. They're, they're playing fighting games on this. They're playing first person shooters on this. And depending on how close you are to the data center that's streaming it to you. It's pretty good. I think yeah. I Verizon think actually, 5G <laughs> bringing you the best <laughs> cloud gaming possible. Absolutely. Oh, man, I, I, I think the, the people who have actually played these. What they complain most about isn't the lag. It is simply the fact that. If you're trying to do 4K visuals, it's compressed video. That's. The only way they can send it to you fast enough is they if they compress the video. So if you're in dark scenes, you got a lot of banding and a lot of it's like really obvious. But I mean, to to be the fact that I could like go to a hotel in the future and just bring my controller with me and I can just sit down and play mm -hmm. any of the games in my library, that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I stay at that hotel. <laughs> oh man, just well, take. Take the kids to the beach and. <laughs> so, yeah. What if I told you you could just get have a TV? Have your white claw. You don't even have to have. Yeah. So. What all right, if I well, told you you could take your Xbox with you? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what uh, got our attention so far. Hang tight just a minute and we'll be listening to a word from our sponsor. This is or something. And we're back. So what we've been playing. Uh, we actually got into Game of the Moment this week and uh, resumed as normal. Uh, and we actually had Demurin actually host this week. He had to play a PS5 game. You want to tell us about it? Did yeah, I played uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is a brand new PS5 exclusive for $70. Oof. Um, it's actually probably uh, worth it. It's like a... I don't even know what I don't know what the actual genre of game it is. I'd assume like action RPG to some degree. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a really fun um, blow everything up story, heavy story based game, really. Um, the art for it was incredible. I loved the aesthetic of the game, the character designs, level designs. Everything about the game was just top notch. Um action shooter platformer is what i'm being told which is fair um yes. it's got puzzles mini games arenas um the actual base storyline it's got um a lot of different aspects to it and i really just hope that there's more to it um i platinumed the game in uh less than 48 hours of, of its release did. essentially yeah um you, you platinum everything like super fast. <laughs> I don't even know why you say that anymore. You just just say like the game, and we're like, oh, obviously yeah. you platinumed it and hundred yeah. percent, and you know, <laughs> on the I've, hardest difficulty. I have, I have finished games and been at like twenty <laughs> percent. I'm happy if I finish a game. Yeah, if I can get yeah, halfway that, through the that's game, all I I'm pretty do. happy. That's, achievements aside, I'm okay if I just finish it. I get the, the achievements as is... you've had an hour into the game, and I'm excited. Um, <laughs> I will yeah. say that Ratchet and Clank is probably one of the easiest games to platinum um, because you can do every single one of the achievements with the exception of one inside of the base game mode. Um, and most of them you have done three hours before the game is even completed in your first playthrough. You don't have to play through any special difficulties. Um, a lot of it's just getting all the collectibles that exist in the game, which a lot of them are detailed on where they are on the map. Um 
So yeah, but the game was just fantastic through and through. I gave it, I think my official rating was a 9.4 out of 10. And only because the game, I mean, obviously ended, which was disappointing. I wanted more. Um, it wasn't super long. Um, and I, I wish there was more to the ending, though I imagine that they left it where they left it because they intend to release um, a future installment that takes you to the next arc. Um, but yeah, it just really well thought out, really well designed. Um, well, lower points specifically because the ending was not what I expected. I wish there was a, a difference to the ending. Yeah. Since one of our uh, live viewers is uh, giving me some <laughs> grief grief <laughs> yeah. about me lowering its points. Um, I expected so, a specific ending. It built towards a specific ending. And they kind of cut just short of it. Like They leave you at a cliffhanger. So... Well, it's it's PlayStation five only game. It's seventy dollars right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting with that cliffhanger to see if they do something like kind of support it for the next couple of years. See if they release some free DLC. Yeah. Uh, pay DLC. Maybe, maybe not. I, I like what uh, Runner Diva says uh, with I think that's my issue. I tried everything and I need to just finish the game and then play the game again to be a cl completionist. Well, then this is the game for you because that's what Demir did. In fact, to unlock some of the weapons, you actually have to play it more than once. So it kind of works. Tell us a little bit more about the, the game plus. How's that been working out for you, Demir, since you've gone so the through game, it more than once? Game plus is just a higher difficulty level. So it stacks on top of the difficulty of the difficulty you're already playing on, but it also adds multipliers. Um, so you get way more bolts, which is the currency inside of the game. Um, an additional experience, all of your guns get a whole new set of levels. So of the 20 weapons in the game, um, they all cap at level five on the first playthrough. When you go into the second playthrough, you unlock the Omega variants, which all have their own new set of five levels to go up to level 10. I have not reached level 10 with any weapon yet, though I assume that much like when you hit level five, the attributes of the weapon change drastically and they start doing special things that um, when I hit level 10, they will change again to their full-fledged Omega variants. I do not know if there was like an alpha variant or something in the next challenge playthrough. If there is another challenge playthrough, I will tell you sometime next week, most likely. <clears throat> I especially liked the mechanics of upgrading your weapons. Because not only when did you upgrade your weapons and you unlocked the weapon's ability to literally heard you go, oh, wow, it does that now. Mm. And yeah. it was suddenly like things exploded or black holes, suns formed. And it was that. But what I appreciated <clears throat> watching you was there was this map of upgrades, all of them, you know, different sh shapes and symbols based off the different guns. And there was 10, 20, and most of them had like 30 or more different upgrades. And it was amazing that if you had earned enough of the upgrade currency, you could just go in there and you like button click, unlock all. <laughs> and it unlocked them all at once instead of doing one after another mm. after in five clicks for each one, like most games would. And then you blew my mind because aside from the unlock all, if you didn't have enough currency, you could click on one and kind of move your cursor around on what path you wanted it to take and select a number of them, <laughs> say 10 in a row. And you just, you know, a couple clicks later, you just unlock all 10 of those row instead of having to do them one at a time. I thought that was a really great addition on this. I, I hope that's something that I hope that other games adopt that have I, giant trees. I feel like they had somebody dedicated to like an actual dedicated team or a resource to go through the game um, and identify like based on maybe QA testers and things like that. Like what are some pain points where there's like useless time sinks mm -hmm. that are just frustrating because there was a lot of stuff in there that I feel like you would generally find in most games that they just corrected for. 
um, which was really nice. There, there wasn't a single thing in that game where I was like, oh, man, this is so tedious. Yeah. Like, I absolutely can't stand that I have to sit here and do X in order to get this one thing done. Like, everything was streamlined, awesome. which made the game yeah. go by faster. But at the same time, I didn't have the frustration. I was like, oh, yeah, well, because it takes approximately five seconds per each node and there's like 2000 nodes in the game, it didn't artificially inflate my gameplay by like an hour to three hours of time. Yeah. It was just like it was just there. You just you just hit one button. You just unlock the whole weapon or you clicked chain. You selected 20 different ones. You just clicked it another time and that's it. You're done. Um, so there was a lot of quality of life implemented mechanics in the game. Um, and the bugs were almost non-existent. Wow. The only thing in that entire game that consistently caused bugs, and by consistently I mean in 24 hours of gameplay, I'd say every six hours I ran into it once, which is fairly consistent. That means four, four times in the game I ran into some kind of bug. It was always the same thing. Clipping issues with NPCs that were mobile in the world. Uh, um, an NPC would like move toward me if I was like in a corner, um, like looking at my menus and I'd come out of it and I'd try and move and I'd be stuck in between a wall and like a robot and I wouldn't be able to jump out or move in any shape or form. And I would just have to restart at the last checkpoint. And that happened to me legitimately four times. Four times so throughout the entire playthrough. you through. basically experienced all the major bugs that um, Mike experienced in <laughs> Cyberpunk. Uh, yeah about no, four no, that's, a, that's about no. it that's yeah. good <laughs> that's Almost awesome four. Well, like, that that really it, shows like the effort they put into it all the QAing they put into it that's amazing that's awesome yeah well you can't you cannot talk about clipping <laughs> without day drinker talking about her favorite feature of that game oh the huge heads oh <laughs> God, they were enormous. <laughs> That's what she one said. one thing that I guess I will mention is Ratchet and Clank. Um, since the dawn of the very first Ratchet and Clank, they've had this system in the game, which is the gold bolt system. There's these golden bolts that exist throughout the game, and as you collect them, you unlock special functions in the game. That whether so it's cool. God mode, infinite ammo, um, different visual effects, so like sepia, Mars, um, television mm. um home movie like noir newspaper and it changes like the the filters for the entire game mirror mode which um essentially <laughs> makes everything the opposite world like yeah. everything's reversed in a different direction yeah. which changes the way the game feels um golden guns which is always a hilarious thing um where you turn it on and all of your guns are now made of gold <laughs> um so like there's just a lot of additional functions you unlock as time goes through. And really, I mean, they don't, they don't get like some games will give you those options. And if you toggle them, they'll be like, Whoa, you toggled this. You no longer get achievements. But yeah. from what I could read online, that does not actually remove the achievements. You still get nice. them. So like when I was playing challenge mode on our game at the moment, I legitimately was just like, all right, let's just turn on infinite ammo and see how this goes. And I was just shooting the rhino, which summons portal, like creates portals that brings things from different dimensions. And I was just blowing stuff up all over the place. So it's, it's really great. The game just gives you a lot of freedom. Just do whatever dumb thing you want to do. That's the, um, yeah, I think so. I loved it. The, the only uh, minor gripe I had with the game was uh, <laughs> at least along those sides, the lack or at least I didn't see any of it. Uh, what looked like the lack of accessibility mode for things like colorblindness when they obviously can change all the visuals super fast mm. and change it to something else. It was interesting that I didn't see any colorblind mode. I'm not sure about what other accessibility modes that they might have. I'm not sure if they have something for, uh, I'm, I'm sure they have subtitles, right? Subtitles for hard of hearing. Um, I'm, I, maybe maybe they have something for left-handers. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I was actually kind of, it was kind of interesting that they didn't have anything for colorblindness. So, but I mean, in the scheme of things, still an amazing game. Mm. It was fun to watch. I love to watch games TikTok. that I don't typically play. Um, always have. And that's, this was another one that I really enjoyed. 
Well, what else have you been playing this week, Bruno? Um, another game that I have recently picked up is actually an MMORPG that was just brought to me uh, two days ago um, by somebody I never had, haven't actually talked to in like uh, a decade. Um, it's an MMORPG called Swords of Legends Online. Um, it's apparently the equivalent of um, like World of Warcraft, but for China. Uh, and it's going to be releasing soon in um, the rest of the world. Uh, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's very much like a feudal era um, style MMORPG, very stereotypical like Asian MMORPG. Um, but it has so much to it already. Just playing the demo, which is part of um, a Steam massive steam demo reel that's currently out um there's just so much of the game like i'm so impressed by what is there the game currently runs on unreal engine 3 and they're porting the entire game to unreal engine 4 before its formal release um and it already looks great on unreal engine 3 um i've just been having a decent amount of fun with that i've played maybe like eight hours of it or so um to some degree some of that time was mostly afk but um, nonetheless uh the combat is great it's an action combat based game uh right now it looks like it will have a minimum cost of 40 dollars to play um but um i don't know i'll have more information on it once i get more into the demo or once they start doing a beta for it but so far so good i've been kind of jonesing for a new mrpg to play nice to keep us updated what about you phoenix did you have anything this week I don't see anything on here, but just in case. No. Nope, nothing here. Just live reporting from E3. <laughs> what about you, David? I mean, that was the game that I played. <sighs> I, I concentrated on that and I watched all the videos. I watched, took notes. I did my homework. Yeah. Unlike me, who shows up with no homework and lies on the group to, to pass the project for me. Apparently the dog ate <laughs> yours. <laughs> oh, man. Day Drinker, what'd you play? Uh, so I watched more of uh, E3, and um, I don't remember which segment it was, but um, there was a part where they were talking about Happy Game, which has been anticipated, but um, it, yeah, I already said it, like, weird, creepy stuff. Uh, <laughs> this game, um, the creators also created uh, Botanicula. So I don't know if I said that right or Chuchel. I uh, don't know if I said that right either. Um, but I did check those out both afterward. Um, not as cool as I think Happy Game is going to be. It's um, basically a game about this little boy who gets stuck in a nightmare. Uh, mm -hmm. Your goal is to make him happy. But so you're through these weird, creepy, like circusy. Um, was that uh the monkey that has the symbols claims the symbols there's some weird stuff that happens but it's all so far the demo was slow uh so you like pull up an arm and like it goes down and it makes this weird head stretch and then this other thing comes out it was that's probably the worst description of any game ever but it was creepy enough to keep my attention there wasn't the blood and gore that I expected from the description of the game, but I'm hoping that that will change. So for <laughs> me, it was kind of slow and steady wins the race. It, there wasn't any hurry up speed, crazy anticipation, but you wanted to like finish the goal of that game. I thought it was fun. I'm it's on my wish list, so I'm definitely going to play it. Sweet. Yeah, I didn't even heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually played something uh, last night for about an hour. It's again, it's been a week. I know it's my coin term this this week, but uh, I did play something for about an hour. I said 15 minutes earlier and I, I realized it was almost about an hour. Uh, but I can't I check out a game Xbox Game Pass. Uh, it's called East Shade and it's kind of Shade. just a it kind of caught my eye uh, because the way that the game was described, it's a, you're like a painter and you're going to be painting 
these like really crazy looking like uh, like landscapes and things. So I was like, OK, let me just check this out. And um, it starts off like you're on a boat and you're kind of going across the ocean. And uh, what you like end up coming across is this place that you're going to uh, that your mom has basically your mother has um, told you about as a child. And it's like the most beautiful place. It has like the beautiful, you know, landscape things. And uh, so you're going there. And one of the things that you learn is that you're a painter and uh, you have an easel. It's the only thing that you keep with you. Uh, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but you basically have an easel and uh, you can create canvases. And then with uh, the, the actual and you can play this game. So my thing, obviously, with the, the key bindings, right, I'm like freaking out. There's no option to change key bindings. And I literally have, you know, my mouse and then the right hand should be using WASD. And I'm like, this is just oh. terrible. Um, but what actually is really neat is the left click uh, makes you um, do whatever action you're doing. Uh, right click actually moves your character forward. So if you just move the mouse around, you can kind of move, maneuver however you want to with just using the mouse. Um, so that was pretty neat. Uh, but the one thing you do is you you know create your canvases, and then when you design uh, the painting that you're going to paint, you actually left click and drag, and you can kind of size. Um, the square rectangle or whatever odd shape you're going to use um, to make that painting of whatever you're basically taking a picture of. Um, so it's really neat. You can kind of just do that in wherever. And when you'll come across people that'll be like, hey, you know, I'll do X if you paint me this picture of this really cool thing that I've been looking at uh, or something similar to that. Or, hey, I've really had this memory of like this this one place. Like, man, if you could bring me a, a painting of that, that would be great. Um, so it was very much like that. It was very, um, it, it reminded me of almost like, uh, like Elder Scrolls, uh, not as beautiful with all the mods or anything like that. Not like Skyrim maxed out, but yeah. uh, it definitely has that feel like of being a very fantasy land uh, where they're and the cre and these aren't creatures. These like are like humanoid, but animals. So there's like, uh, like, you know, owl people, there's like deer people or antelope yeah. people or monkey something, people. monkey yeah. people. Um, so it, it took a minute to kind of, to, to kind of get used to that. Um, they all had different accents and things. Um, but overall a really cute and like very like kind of chill game because there's no guns, there's no nothing going. It's just literally you and an easel and you're painting. So, uh, you can't get more Bob Ross than that. Yeah. Hmm. The, the one thing I would like to add to that is, um, in the game, there, there are uh, eclipses twice a day, and the eclipses add to your um, goals. It, it is a, and they play this beautiful music. It is actually really cool because like it, it starts happening, but then other things in the game start happening. Like you can hear different bugs and um, different flowers start to behave differently. I, yeah. I think. It, for music me, was pretty neat too yeah the music is very beautiful for me and you encounter other uh like you were you were saying uh different types of people different characters and they all have their own personalities and you start to get used to them it's awesome it for me to like come home from work and just like relax it was a good it's been a good game for me to play at one point my parents took my kids for the weekend and i played it for several hours and i'm just like this is amazing Let's, when's the next eclipse happening <laughs> right that's awesome see i also have to finish it's that cool. one up uh, again that's free right now on xbox game pass i don't I, I did terrible homework this week i don't even know what the price is typically but <laughs> Um, probably uh, 20 bucks. Just speaking so. of speaking of terrible homework and getting a quick correction in there for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, uh, chat has been kind to correct me that it has a whole menu of accessibility options, which is very good. That's very awesome. And while they didn't notice anything specific for color blindness, they did mention that you can uh, in there change the contrast quite a bit, which typically is for color blindness, and be able to change colors of a number of things as. Uh, and in addition, you can, of course, change those bolts to a different currency like energy drinks or gems and stuff like that. That changes the color of them. So it makes it easier to see the currency. And surprisingly enough, they actually have an accessibility option for motion sickness. So that's kind of interesting. All right, well, let's get into our short attention news. Let's do it. And our first story is a great one. 
It is. Um, it comes from E3 slash post E3 information. The vice president of Bethesda, Pete Hines, is I don't know. He's kind of apologizing for the fact that Starfield is going to be an exclusive. Um, I don't really think he should, per se. Um, but he came out and he publicly said, like, hey, we're sorry that some of these games from Bethesda are going to be exclusives. Um, and he kind of, I, I feel like, made some stuff up to say that, like, oh, well, it's because we're trying to provide better content by focusing on just specific platforms, and which I just think is a way of him, like, being like, there's a reason for it. We're sorry. It's not just monetary. I think it is monetary, and I think it's totally fair that they they make exclusives like that. Um, but of course, there is a bit of an outcry from um, the PlayStation community um, that like, hey, this game's not coming to PlayStation and it's not fair. Like we we deserve to play this game like Bethesda has been making games for all platforms for so long. And now you're kind of forcing it into just one place. And he's just like, well, yeah, but, you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, my opinion is. Get an Xbox. They bought a company for seven point eight billion dollars. So if you didn't expect them to make their games exclusives, you're actually insane. True that. Well, not insane is the collect. Well, actually, very insane is the collective intelligence of the internet, because as always, you have game makers that try to be a little sly. They try to be cute. They try to tweet stuff out that they think you're not going to figure out, but they want you to figure out eventually. And then they're continually shocked at how quickly you figured out as Bethesda found out when they tweeted this picture, part of the video that shows the side of a monitor that with this odd little scratch in it and that little scratch right underneath kind of that leftmost kind of rivet right there in the Chrome. People looked at them like, Oh, that actually looks like a part of the map from Elder Scrolls. And it lines up pretty well to the peninsulas for High Rock and Hammerfell. So a lot of people are thinking that that is a clue on where Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be. Well, in GTA 5 news, because, you know, that game hasn't been around long enough yet, because uh, we'll have the new console coming out with the, the newest version of GTA 5 along. It's like the new Skyrim. It's like, you know, the toaster will eventually have it. Uh, they actually made an announcement uh, this week that they're going to be shutting down the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 servers for any online play. Uh, so if you own uh, GTA 5 on PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, uh, after the date of September 16th, you will no longer have the ability to play online. Um, this will also affect any sort of achievements you get through the social um, the aspect of it, the Rockstar Online. Um, so anything that has to relate to achievements from online play, those will disappear from the game. Um, this will also affect Max Payne 3 and also L.A. Noir. So uh, the game, they have said the games are going to continue being able to be played. Uh, you will not be able to be able to buy any more shark cards uh, and um, the game will work as normal. It's just the online aspect of it will be disappearing. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Forza because that's how I know how to say it now. Uh, Horizon <laughs> 5. Um, IGN released a list of the cars. First of all, Forza Horizon 5 looks amazing. They're all amazing. But this one looks fantastic. Love that it's set in Mexico. Cannot wait to play it. Uh, list of only 31 cars so far. Uh, vehicles, I should say, so far that are, are going to be in the game. The one that I did notice is missing is the Jeep. Not really happy about that yet. Uh, I also want to say their uh, trailer had Arkells and my girl, Kay Flay, uh, as the artists uh, singing that song. So, oh, I can't, oh. I, uh, now I can't remember the name of the song, but we'll post it in the show link. So, for sure, sure. Sorry, and, yes, uh, can we post it in the show link? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will. Thanks. Uh, so, one of the things coming up as well that people couldn't wait to play was, of course, anything Final Fantasy, and as we saw from the Square Enix 
update, they want to remake everything Final Fantasy and sell it to us again uh, in episodes if they can. And one of the announcements that they had was Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, because if you have a Final Fantasy, it's got to start somewhere. And they said that demo, the demo of that game is available now. So what they told us during their apps, during their presentation to which people downloaded it. And it immediately didn't work. Bum, bum, ba, dum. <laughs> Thank you for reading the show notes. No problem. <laughs> I so anyway. the not much of a news story, really, because it actually does work now. I tested it out right before this and you can go in there. My understanding is it's going to be kind of a Dark Souls of Final Fantasy. So if that interests you, go check it out. Yep. I uh, unsubscribed. Thanks. <laughs> uh, next, or finally, the Xbox mini fridge. Oh, I thought that was hysterical. So um, Xbox got in a Twitter fight with Skittles and one. Uh, they said that they would definitely make a mini fridge, uh, the world's most powerful mini fridge to be exact. Uh, it, one thing I did notice though, it doesn't look like it from what I saw, I'm not sure it can hold a Red Bull, like the, the larger cans, maybe on their sides. I, that's yet to be seen. I will buy one for sure. If it can fit a Red Bull. Boy, it, I agree with you. It does look itty bitty yeah. tiny. Yeah. But it's I'm a mini totally fridge, guys. <laughs> oh, this is like a micro fridge. Yeah. It, it looks like for regular yeah. cans, it looks it like it could probably good. Barely Sorry. hold a 12 pack. Yeah. Sorry. Your no. story. <laughs> I like, I know I like to talk over everybody. So that's my problem. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. No, it definitely looks like it's super tiny. Like, my seltzer waters will fit in there perfectly, but where are my Red Bulls going to go? Or you just don't drink them. Uh, the tall boys. So Steam uh, has been having their game festivals um, kind of like a couple of times a year whenever they decide to do that. Uh, we've seen a couple of them that we covered before. Um, they've actually kind of rebranded under a new name. It's called Steam. Uh, it's going to be called Steam Next. Uh, this one actually starts next week, uh, and they'll have over 700 games uh, listed for a demo. Uh, one of those games uh, I actually posted in our chat earlier, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's a really neat little like game where you're actually the environment trying to take back society. Uh, I think it's like Nilha or something. Um, yeah, it's oh man, I should have been Terra Nil. Terra Nil, that's what it was. Um, but yeah, there's yes. a bunch of different games on there. Um, seven hundred to be over seven hundred to be exact. Uh, but you'll be able to go check those out starting next week. Uh, you'll be able to download the demo. Um, usually they'll have the developers and stuff uh, actually playing the game uh, for video content that you can see, and then other things like that as well. So uh, pretty neat. Go check that out. And now for our final story. Coming back to everybody on PlayStation is none other than Cyberpunk 2077. After 180 days of exile for betraying the gaming community, they finally get to return to the PlayStation store. <laughs> A legend of their own right, even though for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> They've apparently made enough amends to where Sony is like, okay, you can come back. So, Patches. I wonder if they just feel bad. Like, they just, they feel like they have to get them back. Maybe. But you know what? It, it's time. They, they're, they're releasing one more patch coming up here soon. I believe it's not out yet. It's coming. It's supposed to be another massive optimization patch. According to them, it may be the biggest optimization patch they've released so far. And as such, Sony has rescinded their ban on Cyberpunk 2077. So they have Ban lifted. <laughs> yeah, literally. 
So we have the next part, which is our emails. And I will have to say, we do have an email. As soon as I can log in to check it, because apparently on my phone, <laughs> it's not showing up, which is terrible. So somebody tell a joke prep, in the meantime prep, prep while I pull this prep up. Prepped as always, I can see. Uh, yeah, yeah, again, it's it's not my fault. It's uh, it's the mm -hmm. whole internet thing. It's just been really weird lately. Um, not sure how this works yet. I'm trying to figure it out. So a pirate <laughs> walks into a bar and he's got a steering wheel hanging from his, you know, area. Oh my god! And uh, the bartender area. says, "The bartender it's almost like says, a belt buckle." Can you clarify what this is? Like a belt is? buckle. No, well, no, no. The bartender says, hey, man, you know you got a steering wheel like hanging from your 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 region, uh, your undercarriage? And he says, the bartender, the, the pirate says, "R, it's driving me nuts. This is not an original joke. <laughs> I saw that at the television show. <laughs> No, I you said to joke. tell a joke. You said to tell a joke. Hey, that that works for me, and that should have given <laughs> yeah, us just I'm, enough I'm time. I'm looking at the hopefully. emails, and this <laughs> did you find the email? <laughs> verbal audio spotlight app now available. That's not it. It's really weird. My phone's not showing the rest of these emails, but I've got it up now. Uh, this this one came in from uh, Andy Quast. Uh, he said, uh, "Hey, just to throw it out there, just to throw this out there." I was half looking for an Xbox and obviously it's sold out everywhere. I was on the Walmart site. It was sold out, but I clicked on all access, followed the steps and three days later, Xbox at my house. So if anyone is still wow. looking, uh, looking that, you know, they may have luck from this. So I figured I'd put that uh, just to put it on the list or if that would be sold out as it's done for me late last year. I was surprised that when it went through, I figured I'd be getting Game Pass anyway, free shipping, no interest or early payoff penalty. So it's not bad, not bad of a deal, Andy. So nice. that was Thanks, Andy. pretty good. Nice Thanks. little tidbit Thanks, there. Andy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why these aren't showing up on my phone. It's really strange. Like, uh, it's they just disappear once I've viewed them. Like, it's only showing me inbox or it's unread. It's probably because you suck. It's probably well, because I suck. It's fine. No, only James and sucks. You're good. Thanks. It's true. <laughs> uh, in the bad way. He's the only one that sucks in the bad way. Yeah. Uh, actually, Andrew's email here is really interesting because it reminds me of something that Microsoft started that I've not heard of for months, probably because you can't buy any of the consoles. But remember, they had that whole thing that they had started up again, the whole like buy to own, you know, rent, almost rent to own without interest. They had that like the interest free thing and you paid a certain amount and you got the Xbox and like game pass with it at the same time for a set amount. If you, and if you pay the whole thing, it actually ended up being cheaper than owning both of them for the year or two years. I just haven't heard anything about that probably because yeah. there hasn't been any, but uh, him, uh, Andrew talking about this really remind me of that. Cool. So that, uh, that is what got our attention this week. Uh, if cool. you are listening to the podcast, you can check us out live on Thursdays on Twitch uh, or later. We put it up on YouTube afterwards. Uh, you can also check us out on Tuesdays. We do Game Over Moment. So the Game of the Moment we talk about is usually a video we actually throw up on YouTube later as well. Uh, game so of you can Our check Moment the, sounded game like, of, uh, <laughs> like a, was a, a soap opera. <laughs> game of Our Moment. Game of Our Moment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's Welcome basically... To SAS gamers, games of our lives. <laughs> yes. I was hoping for a Verizon com commercial, but that's fine. Uh, so, um, brought to you by Verizon 5G. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if uh, if you're interested in following us, you can check us out at sasgaming.com. It's s a s s gaming.com, uh, and then you can find all of our links and everything going there. Uh, we also have a Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting us a little more than just mm -hmm. hanging out, uh, check out our Patreon, Patreon.com/sasgaming. Uh, outside of that, you can find me personally on my my little deets. Uh, it's XYCIA on Twitch or on Twitter or Instagram. It's XYCIA Gaming. Brian, I was like, I was like, line. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Phoenix Nova. That's P H O E N N I X underscore Nova on Twitch, which I haven't done for a long time. But again, I'll probably start that up again soon now that they've made some changes. And I am on the cusp, the cusp 
I tell you on actually being able to rename my YouTube channel to something that actually matters, considering that I've got 92 subscribers. So I need to get to 100 to rename it. So I'm almost there. So soon we'll have YouTube, probably Phoenix Nova or something like that, where you can find me there as well. Sweet, Bruno. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash Demiron, D-Y-M-Y-R-N, or Demiron Gaming. And Day Drinker. Yeah, Kelly. so you can catch me at lots of places at Day Drinker ATL, but there's not a whole lot of content there yet, so... <laughs> Instagram. We look forward to Twitter. it. Twitter. Yeah, I'm on it this week. Sounds good. Well, until next time, y'all. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, you know, and uh, until we meet again, we'll talk to you guys soon. You guys be easy. Goodbye. See you.